One Zambia, One Nation, good to have you tuning in to TV2, the parcel television for the news at 18 hours. And these are the top stories in this hour's news. President Ted Galungo has challenged the Law Association of Zambia Laws to form a political party and not against the profession. The government says it is in the process of finalizing the sale and export of 100,000 metric tons of maize to Kenya. And government will this year disperse a total of 889 million kwacha to the councils, of which 20% will be for capital projects. Thanks for tuning in. President Edgar Lungu has challenged the Law Association of Zambia Laws to form a political party and not abuse the profession. President Lungu has since advised Laws to focus on its intended mandate, adding that it is, should not be used for politics. He has explained that it is unacceptable for us to continue politicking. The president has also noted law is, noble, profe is a noble profession and should not be entangled in politics. President Nongo has said this today in Lusaka shortly before departure to Swaziland, where he has been on a two-day state visit. want to form a political party, let them go ahead and form a political party. Let them not abuse the profession. It's a noble one. Yeah. Because what they are saying is politics. You can see it's politics. For me, I challenge them to form their own political party. But let them not abuse the profession. Okay? Thank you. If they want to take me on on that one, they can take me on. But the truth is that there is too much politics in the Law Association of Zambia. If they want to form a political party, let them go ahead and form one. We'll meet them. But to abuse a noble profession, like the law profession where I belong, it's unacceptable. Where are the lawyers in this country? Yesterday, the Law Association of Zambia Laws said President Ed Galungu has the legal discretion to invoke Article 31 of the Constitution. Last President Linda Kasonde, however, advised people who feel aggrieved by the President's invocation of Article 31 to seek legal redress. Meanwhile, President Ed Galungu has arrived in Swaziland for three day state visits at the invitation of King Swati III. The plane carrying President Nungu landed at Masapa International Airport in Swaziland at 12.37 hours. President Nungu was welcomed by King Muswati III, Prime Minister Banabas Sibusiso Dlamini, and some Swaziland cabinet ministers. Others who welcomed the President are Minister of Chiefs and Traditional Affairs Lawrence Sichalwe, Tourism Minister Charles Banda, and Zambian Ambassador to Mozambique Paul Mumbi. President Nungu is accompanied by President of Presidential Affairs Minister Freedom Sikazwe, Political Advisor Kaiser Zulu, and his Special Assistant for Press and Public Relations, Amos Chanda. ZNBC's Hector Simfuka reports from Manzini that upon arrival, President Nungu inspected the Guard of Honor, which was mounted by Ubuntu for Swaziland Defense Force. During his state visit, President Nungu will visit a, da a dairy farm and sugar plantation, among other projects. A dinner will also be hosted in honor of President Nungu. In other news, government says it is in the process of finalizing the sale and export of 100,000 metric tons of maize to Kenya. Agriculture Permanent Secretary Julius Shawa has confirmed, saying this is after the Kenyan government requested for the consignment. Uh, this is in order to caution the deficit of maize in the East African country. Mr. Shawa told Zanis that the maize will come from the Food Reserve Agency, FRA, but the deal will be handled by the private sector. He has added that government is also encouraging the export of maize by the private sector 
and it will facilitate the export export permits of up to 500,000 tons which is needed by East African the East African countries Mr. Shawa has further clarified that government has not put any limits to the volumes of maize to be exported. He has, however, disclosed that the Minister of Agriculture has received an overwhelming response from the private sector for the issuance of the export permit documents. The Zambia-Egypt joint venture firm in Mwembeshe is bearing fruits and realizing reasonable profits. 200 hectares of land allocated to the venture has since been put to use and the Zambia Correctional Services has planted maize, sunflower and wheat as well as a total of 17 varieties of fruits and vegetables. The firm is also offering courses to Zambian farmers on the latest farming technologies. The office Longo was at the farm. The construction of two new multi-story prison facility in Mwembeshi is progressing well. Two facilities are being constructed under a public-private partnership arrangement. At least 3,300 inmates will be accommodated at the new facilities. The private stakeholders in the project will therefore be handed the land for the current prison facilities to be relocated. And the contractor in the Mwembeshi Sentence Prison Project, Mukuyu Venture, says the work is expected to be completed by the end of this year. Uh, progress is very good. Uh, now we almost completed more than 55 pro, uh, 55 percent, mm -hmm. and uh, up to I think uh, end of the March we are going to finish all the project. Mm -hmm. However, works in what will be remand facility are dissatisfying. The manager for Southek, the contractors in the project, Mr. Chatlan, says some of the designs for the works have not yet been approved. Progress is okay. Uh, we are not. We are satisfied, but it, it actually, it's not very much because we are waiting for the drawings to be approved. Up to now, the drawings have been not approved, so we are just somehow we are stuck. And correctional services spokesperson Margaret now cannot overemphasize the benefits that will come with the modern prisons. The idea of having the construction of two facilities in Mwembeshi is to decongest our already full correctional facilities. We have over 20,000 inmates across the country, so by so doing, we are trying to decongest our facilities knowing that we have gone uh, the uh, correctional approach. Once completed, the Lusaka Central Prison and the Kamwala Remand will be relocated to the new facilities in Mwembeshi. The Office Lungu, TV2 News in Mwembeshi. The government will this year disperse a total of 889 million kwacha to the councils, of which 20% will be for capital projects. Local Government Minister Vincent Mwale has disclosed this today in Choma, Southern Province, when he commissioned the rehabilitated and extended administration block at the Council Civic Centre. And Mr Mwale has noted that there are public concerns that the councils are using even the local government equalisation fund meant for capital projects and personal emoluments. The newly commissioned Civic Centre were funded by Choma Municipal Council at a total cost of more than 1.1 million kwacha using the local government equalisation fund. This is at the expense of social amenities service delivery. And Choma Mayor Javin Simoloka has thanked the government for timely and consistently releasing funding to local authorities. We'll pause for a first set of commercials. When we do return, Zesco says relocating the transmission lines along the Tokyo Way will be costly. Plus much more stories. Stay with us. I'm Samuel Matish and you're watching the main news on TV to the Palace of Television. Zesco says it is extremely costly to relocate at the 3 kV and 132 kV transmission lines along the Tokyo Way in Lusaka. Company spokesperson Henny Kapata says the proposed relocation of the transmission lines is almost impossible and it further requires serious stakeholder engagements. Mr. Kapata has cited the relocation of a rerouting of some transmission lines during construction of Burma and Chilimbulu roads, which cost the road development agency RDA in excess of 4 million kwacha. Uh, remember that uh, we did the rerouting of Burma and Chilumbulu Road. Uh, of course, we were paid around 4 million uh, kwacha by RDA. And we are talking about just about 32 poles on uh, Burma Road and another 22 poles on uh, Chilumbulu Road. And so we are talking about the Tokyo 14-kilometer uh, stretch of pylons. So we should be talking around over 40 million dollars. So we certainly hope that there's so much millions of dollars within the local authorities um, to pay Zesco Limited. Other than that, we cannot open that chapter 
without being engaged in a much more professional manner to handle this issue. Because a rerouting, a rerouting of uh, ZESCO pylons uh, involves a lot of stakeholders' uh, engagement. The Lusaka woman who is alleged to have abandoned her two children in the family's rented house in Charleston while on a business trip says she never meant to leave them alone. Melody Tambo, age 36, a resident of Charleston area, is alleged to have left her 14-year-old son, Solomon, and his four-year-old sibling in the care of her sister. However, the children were evicted from the rented home. Pen Lopsikazu has the rest of the story. I am chatting with a woman who has been condemned by a cross-section of viewers. This is after TV2 News ran the story of the woman's 14-year-old son who was left abandoned while she was out for business in Luangwa. He had spent weeks in their rented home caring for a four-year-old sister before the landlord evicted the children in the absence of their mother. This forced the woman's relatives to take in the younger child, but Solomon was not so fortunate. He was left destitute, spending nights in a church, nibbling at the food some neighbors would spare. But Melody says she never meant to neglect her children. <laughs> First born our copper belt, second born Solomon. As Zamiwe na Lisa, Baba copper belt kwa karambavandi. Mwendo wako wati, nishane kwa nisha, ukuba sunga, na hava singo. So, na Lisa, wakina Lisa alwala, nisha kwete fya kwe wati, she says all she saw was a business opportunity that would allow her not only to look after the children in her custody but three other children who have been under the care of other relatives due to her financial status. So for now, I mean, I could be blue and this one for now. She didn't want to see when I go on our. She is currently squatting with a friend and needs a home in order to look after them better. The single mother of five says she has never been to school, but she can work. All she needs is a chance to start a business in a place within the reach of her children. Penopsikazwe, TV2 News, Lusaka. The Minister of Health says Zambia is among countries experiencing drug resistance in the treatment of gonorrhea. Spokesperson Kennedy Malama says this is despite the reduced burden in the disease prevalence. However, the drug resistance is a concern. We have a report. According to the World Health Organization, drug resistance in treatment of some sexually transmitted diseases is on the rise. Gonorrhea is among these diseases. Worldwide, Gonorrhea is a serious disease affecting at least 78 million people every year. And the Ministry of Health says Zambia has not been spared by this trend. Ministry spokesperson Kennedy Malama says this means the treatment of gonorrhea is slowly becoming difficult. Dr. Malama says this is, however, not unusual, but citing two issues as contributing factors. Because when you use one drug over a long period of time, the microorganism or the microbial agent they are also intelligent they develop certain characteristics which make that particular drug to no longer work just to give you an example some of the factors may include one the way we use these medicines like antibiotics in zambia we know that uh, a number of our people when they just fall sick or they are not feeling uh, they are feeling unwell they go to a drugstore and self-prescribe Dr. Malama further says government has not paid a blind eye to this. The ministry has devised an antimicrobial plan of action spanning 2017 to 2021. But Dr. Malama has a call on members of the general public. To the pub public, members of the public, let's avoid self-prescription of medication because you may be treating something which is not there. 
let's all, always remember to seek health care early in our illness and let's avoid buying medicines from unregistered outlets because some of those medicines may be useless and they may be actually be contributing to drug resistance. Meanwhile, some members of the public are already aware of the contributing factors to drug resistance and they have advice for their colleagues. Getting medicine over the counter has become a bad vice in this nation and it's a habit that should stop. But for one to, to get medication, there is need for a prescription and a prescription can only be given by getting personnel, that is trained medical personnel. So that is Some people just buy medication because other people have told them to buy medication without even having a prescription from the doctor, which is very dangerous. But despite the reducing gonorrhea prevalence rates, the new development is a wake-up call. This is because if not treated, complications of the disease can lead to infertility, among other issues. Kabembe Kasavala, TV2 News. The Staki Hearing Foundation has commended First Lady Esther Lungu for her demonstrated leadership, which has seen the establishment of the first ever hearing training institute in Zambia. Foundation President and Board Chairman Richard Brown says Mrs. Lungu's passion to help people with hearing impairment has made Zambia a model in Africa. Mr. Brown has noted that Zambia, which had only one audiologist countrywide catering for more than 900 people with hearing impairments, will now spear spearhead training of specialists in the field. He said this on Sunday night during the award ceremony of Mrs. Lungu with the prestigious 2017 Humanitarian Award at the 17th Annual So the World May Hear in Minnesota, United States of America. Meanwhile, Staki Hearing Foundation co-founder Tani Austin has also held Mrs. Lungu for her profession in serving people in the country, especially those in the remote parts of Zambia. The first, is, the first lady is expected to arrive in Zambia tomorrow, Wednesday, July 19, 2017. This is according to a statement issued to TV2 News by First Secretary for Press and Public Relations at the Zambian Embassy in Washington, D.C., Cosmos Chilesia. Another break. We'll be back with more stories. And now to sports news. Former National Paralympics Committee of Zambia Vice President George Gondwe has called on the sports body members to work towards revamping the organization. Gondwe, who is vying for the presidency, says there is need for members to leave the Rangos behind. Gondwe was speaking in an interview with TV2 Sports in Lusaka today. The Minister of Sports had directed the National Paralympics Committee of Zambia to hold an elective annual General Assembly before January 2017. However, the General Assembly has not taken off since then. For the National Paralympic Committee of Zambia, to come in numbers and revamp our organization. Please come and support progressive candidates, including myself, so that we can leave wrangles and disunity behind, but promote disability sport. I wish you can look at my vast contribution and long history in disability sport. I am sure we will go beyond September without the long-awaited elective annual general assembly. Let's end the news on that note. Hear the headlines again. President Edgar Lungu has challenged the Law Association of Zambia LAS to form a political party and not abuse the profession. President Lungu has since advised LAS to focus on its intended mandates, adding that it should not be used for politics. Government says it is in the process of finalizing the sale and the export of 100,000 metric tons of maize to Kenya. Sanis reports that Agriculture Permanent Secretary Julia Shawa has confirmed, saying this is after the Kenyan government requested for the consignment. And government will this year disburse a total of 889 million kwacha to the councils, of which 20% will be for capital projects. Local Government Minister Vincent Mali has disclosed this today in Choma, Southern Province, when he commissioned the rehabilitated and extended administration block at the Council Civic Center. The next news will be at 20 hours. I'm Samuel Machish. Keep watching.